All right, and we are live. Good evening po sa inyong lahat mga kaguro. And of course, welcome back to Burung Pinoy. This final coaching day five for let September 2022. But before anything else, of course, let us all have our opening prayer. Dear Lord, I come to you to ask for your guidance and direction in this study session. I ask that the Holy Spirit fill me with strength, creativity, and understanding to get through my studies without difficulty or sin. Help me hold my focus and attention. Help me to retain all that I learn. Please make my mind sharp and keep distractions at bay. If any part of my studying is weak or lacking in some way, let it be revealed so that I may correct it. Thank you for this opportunity to learn. Amen. All right, now once again, this is final coaching day five. Please do like, love, share our video, start a watch party, tag your friends. Again, pakilike na po ng ating video, mag-start ng watch party. It's very important that you are sharing our video so that we can reach out to more people. Again, pakilike na po ng ating video. Okay, and love and share our video, start a watch party if you can. Okay, uh, maraming salamat po to all our star senders, Sir Jimmy Ordonio. Maraming salamat for sending us stars. Ganun din po kay Ma'am Jenny May Bachelier. Maraming salamat po. Sir Darwin Mesa Gabay. Thank you for sending us stars. Sir Ruel N. Ordunia. Maraming salamat po. Ma'am Maria. Thank you so much. Aha. Uh -huh. Again, maraming salamat to all our star senders. Ma'am Hamida M. Lagindad, thank you so much. Okay, again, if you can, please do send us stars on Facebook and Super Chat Super Stickers naman po sa ating YouTube channel. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Nahira Jolly. Okay, again, please do like, love, share our video, start a watch party, and uh, tag your friends. We are going to start in a few minutes. Okay, so again, uh, hindi na po sa September 25th yung inyong licensure exam for teachers. It's going to be on October 2nd. Okay, so please make sure that you are using your time well. Okay, maximize your time. Okay, and of course, uh, balikan po lahat ng ating videos. May, may namumukpok ba? May pumupukpok. Okay, meron po talaga, may nagpapanday po ba? Meron na po silang iniayos, inaayos lang po. Meron silang inaayos dito sa labas ng bahay, pero in a few minutes, they'll be done. Okay, naririnig niyo naman po ako, di ba? Okay, naririnig niyo pa naman po ako. Medyo meron na mumukpok sa, lab sa labas ng bahay, meron pong inaayos, but they are going to be done in a few minutes. But of course, we have to go on with our show, go on with our final coaching. Sabi niyo, si Sheila Gitalan, may nagre-repair siguro. May inaayos po sa, lab sa labas ng aming bahay, okay? But hopefully they will be done in a few minutes. Again, please do like, love, share our video. We start with question number one. <laughs> Ma'am Jovelyn Mordin. Sabi ni Ma'am Jovelyn, kala ko nasa diskuhan ako. Maraming salamat Ma'am Lerma Nogal for sending a super chat dito po sa ating YouTube channel. Okay, now question number one. Ang wikang malikain ay mataas na antas ng wika na ginagamit sa letter A pamantayan, letter B panghuhula, letter C panitikan, or letter D palaisipan. Ayan, sabi ni Ma'am Irma, naririnig pa daw niya ako. Sabi ni Ma'am Irma, Chloe Lovell, naririnig pa naman po. Akala ko sira headset ko. Sabi ni Ma'am Melanie Reyes. Okay, you know, sometimes there are some things that we cannot control, but of course, we have to make do with um, with what we have. Okay, medyo may inaayos sila kasi uh, malakas yung ulan na baka bumaha pag hindi inayos. Okay, I see a lot of letter C's for question number one. Tumpak kaya ang mga nag-letter C? Or genocide kaya ang question number one? Marami kayang ligwak sa question number one. Okay, number one, this of course is Filipino, no? Isa din sa mga reason kung bakit dumudugo yung ating ilong sa left ng licensure exam for teachers niyo. Malapit na malapit na October 2nd, you have an extension of one week. Again, magpa-member po kayo sa Team PSA if you can. 
or kung hindi kaya ng budget, magpa-member po sa final coaching natin po. Pwede naman po. If you are a member of our final coaching group at gusto nyo pong balikan lahat ng videos natin sa Team Piaché, ay mag-send po kayo ng message sa ating Facebook page kung paano po kayo mapalipat no, sa Team Piaché. Okay, letter C for number one. Ang wikang malikain ay mataas na antas ng wika na ginagamit sa, of course, your hint here is the term malikain. Okay, so malikain po yung hinahanap nating or nakikita nating term sa ating question. And of course, the correct choice here would be letter C, panitika. No? So halimbawa ng mga malilikain pananalita, yung mga makikita natin sa panitikan, kunwari, you don't say, siya ang aking asawa, yung sinasabi mo ay siya ang kabiyak ng aking dibdib. Okay? Siya ang ilaw ng aming tahanan, siya yung aming nanay. Daw. But your, your words would be malikain, ang inyong mga salita ay mabulaklak na mga salita no, sa panitikan. Okay? So letter C, panitikan ang ating tumpak na choice. Congratulations sa mga nakatumpak. And sa mga ligwak naman, parang wala naman akong nakitang ligwak, no? Halos lahat kayo ay tumpa. Congratulations. Very good. Okay, we go to number two. Animalia is to kingdom as Cordata is to blank. Letter A, class. Letter B, kingdom. Letter C, phylum. Or letter D, genus. This, of course, is in science. Siya ang aking kaututang dila. Parang ang baho ng dila, no? Kaututang dila. Okay, yan yung mga example ng ating mabulaklak na pananadita sa pantikan. Okay, so malakas yung ulan kanina and so meron silang inayos kasi baka bumaha no, pag hindi nila pinokpo. Ayon, tapos na yata. Hopefully, tapos na. Okay, number two, ICC. Yes. Letter C pa rin, ang inyong choice for number two. C, Phylum. Again, maraming salamat po to all our star senders. Ma'am Christina Laron, maraming maraming salamat po. Super chatter, super sticker senders naman sa ating YouTube channel. Thank you. Ma'am Mary Jane Handugan, maraming salamat for sending us stars. Maraming salamat po. Okay, again, your choice for number two science is letter C, phylum. Okay, Animalia is to kingdom, as Cordata is to letter A class, B kingdom, C phylum, or letter D genus. And the correct choice here, of course, would be letter C, tumpak ang phylum. Okay, letter C phylum, ang ating tumpak na choice. Now, when you say phylum, phylum Cordata, this is a phylum which is made up of animals with vertebrates, okay, or a spinal column and a cranium. Okay, so chordates, your Cordata would be your your animals with vertebrates, yung merong spinal column, and of course, my cranium. Now, when you say cranium, this is the skull, okay, yung bungo. And uh, here, you have five major groups of animals under phylum chordata. You have the fish, you have your amphibians, your reptiles, your birds, and of course, mammals, such as humans, are all part of your phylum chordata, okay? Now, remember, um, you have these different levels of organization in your taxonomy, na taxonomic ranks mo. Lumalabas po ito sa let na yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng taxonomic ranks. Uh, who is the father of modern taxonomy? Again, bago natin puntahan itong ating taxonomic ranks. Who again is the father of modern taxonomy? Please put that in our comment box. Ma'am Anjanette Malikad, maraming salamat po for being one of our subscribers. Ma'am Ma Rapunzel Aluba, thank you for sending us stars. Okay, who is the father of modern taxonomy? Mm -hmm. Carl Linnaeus, okay, Carl Linnaeus or Carolus Linnaeus, tama po yan, no? so Carl, Carolus Linnaeus or Carl Linnaeus, that is the father of modern taxonomy, okay, so siya yung nagbigay sa atin ng pagkakasunod-sunod ng taxonomic ranks. Na lumalabas po yan sa leto, si Carolus Linnaeus, lumalabas siya as the father of uh, your modern taxonomy, ganun din yung mga pagkakasunod-sunod nito, so dapat eh, minimemorize nyo itong pagkakasunod-sunod ng different taxonomic ranks. So you have domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species, okay? Um, now, uh, usually, what I would teach the students would be to use the mnemonics. The mnemonic natin dito would be, Dear King Philip came over for greater success. Okay, again, that's Dear King Philip 
came over for greater success, which would stand for domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species with domain as the most inclusive, no? Siya yung may pinakamaraming members. If there's no domain in your choices, then your answer there would be kingdom, no? So, uh, pinaka-inclusive, it includes a lot of organisms. Pinaka-exclusive mo naman would be your, your species, okay? So, species mo would be the most exclusive. Siya yung pinaka, pinakamaliit na grupo, no? So, if you have homo sapiens, for example, as the scientific name of your humans, Homo there is actually the genus name and sapiens would be the species name. Lumalabas yung po yan sa let, no? If uh, the, um, the scientific name of rice is Oriza sativa, what is sativa? Is it the kingdom name, phylum name, the species name, or the genus name? And so then your answer would be species, no? So sativa, Oriza is the genus name. Sativa is your species name. Now you also have to remember na yung dalawang organisms po, hindi magkakaanak unless they belong to the same species. Okay? So, unless you belong to the same species, pag pareho kayong tao, there is a chance na magkakaanak kayo. So, ikaw at ang kambing, ikaw at ang kabayo, ikaw at ang aso, ikaw at ang pusa, kahit anong gawin mo, hindi po kayo magkakaanak. Okay? So, only two organisms belong to the same species can have offsprings. Okay? But then again, you have to remember the different levels of taxonomy here. Lumalabas po ito sa let. And uh, of course, you can use our mnemonic, Dear King Philip, came over for greater success. Okay? Uh, po, pwede ka din namang gumawa or mag-invento ng sarili mong mnemonics if you want to. Now, speaking of King Philip, no, of course, um, he has already died and kaka... Um, Dahil lang din ni, ni uh, Queen Elizabeth II. Okay? So baka lumabas din sa let nyo. Paborito din siya ng let as the longest reigning monarch. Yan yung pinaka-common na question sa let with regard to uh, Queen Elizabeth II. But we all know that she died just very recently, September 8, no? na, na matay siya doon sa United Kingdom. Okay? But here, our choice again for number two is letter C, phylum. Letter C, phylum po ang tumpak na choice for number two. We move on with question number three. The poem that expresses faith in the Filipino youth as hope of the fatherland is letter A, La Bileza de Una Rosa, letter, a, uh, letter B, Al Trabajo, letter C, A La Juventud Filipina, or letter D, Mi Ultimo Adios. Okay, what is our choice for number three? Number three, what is our choice? Okay, basahin ko lamang yung comment ni Ma'am Ann Munoz dito sa ating Facebook page. Hi Ma'am Mac, good evening po. Team Piaché po ako Ma'am. Marami din po lumabas last June, board exam sa reviewer ninyo. At LPT na po ako ngayon, kakakuha ko lang po ng license ko kanina sa PRC. Again, ma'am, maraming salamat po sa inyong tulong. Okay? So be like uh, Ma'am Ann Munoz, isa sa ating mga LPTs. Magpa-member po sa Team Piaché para, of course, makita, makita niyo lahat ng files natin doon. Ma-download niyo if you want. Makapag-print kayo kung gusto niyo. Kung ayaw niyo namang mag-print po, pwede namang panoorin niyo na lang lahat ng full-length videos natin doon para siguradong pasado no? before the end of this year, LPTs na po tayo. Okay. Ma'am Cindy, marami salamat for sending us stars. Okay, now I see a lot of letter C's for question number three. Lumabas din ito ng June, no? So lumabas yung mga, of course, the items that we were we are tackling here in Gurung Pinoy. Ito talaga yung mga items na nakikita nyo sa actual let. Okay, so you can never go wrong with Gurung Pinoy. So again, magpa-member na po kayo sa uh, Team Piaché. At kung magtitake naman kayo next March, ay magpa-member po kayo sa Team Brunner. Mag-send lamang po na message sa ating Facebook page. Okay, the poem that expresses faith in the Filipino youth as hope of the fatherland is the correct choice here. Of course, is letter C. Ala huwintod Filipina. Okay, let's take a look at your um, explanation. 
Alaho Bintod Filipina was written by Rizal when he was only 18 years old and was dedicated to the Filipino youth, which he describes as the fair hope of my motherland. There is also a common question in the left with regard to Alaho Bintod Filipina, and that is, uh, this is the poem, ito po yung tula, na isinulat ng ni, ni Serizal, Dr. Serizal, when he was in UST, you know, when he was a student in the University of Santo Tomas. Okay, so your answer there would also be Ala Juventud Filipina. All right, so for number three, C is the correct choice. We go to number four, Governor General Narciso Claveria ordered the letter A use of Spanish surnames by Filipinos, letter B founding of the Union Obrera Democratica, letter C tobacco mon monopoly, or letter D resettlement of Filipino communities in Cabiceras. What is our choice for number four? Ma'am Heke, maraming salamat po for sending us stars. Ganon din kay Sir Garel Yanto. Thank you po. Okay, what's your choice for question number four? Number four na po tayo. Ano po yung ating choice for number four? Okay, question number four, what's your choice? All right, number four, I see A's. Tumpak kaya ang letter A for number four. Okay, letter A for question number four. Governor General Narciso Claveria ordered the and the correct choice, of course, here would be letter A, the use of uh, Spanish surnames by Filipinos. Okay, so letter A, ang ating tumpak na choice. Now, sino naman yung nag-found ng Union Obrera Democratica? If your question is who founded the Union Obrera Democratica, what will be your answer? Okay, ano po yung inyong choice kapag... Ka Yung uh, question is letter B, the founding of the Union Obrera Democratica. Mamvino Sunier, Montero Sunier, no? Mamvino so Montero Sunier, batiin ko lamang, no? isa sa mga nanay na ating mga kaguro, no? katulad kong nanay, sabi niya, malaking tulog po ang gurong Pinoy sa aming mga nanay kasi pwede namin ma-review kapag hindi nakakasali sa live, Okay. Thank you po. And of course, that's one advantage of doing our review online. Isabelo de los Reyes, sabi ni Sir Re Ren Iqban. Okay, sabi ni Sir JC Maalihan, ni Miss July, Isabelo de los Reyes. Tumpak, no? So, Isabelo de los Reyes po, kung ang inyong tanong ay the founding of Union Obrera Democratica. Now, what if the question is about letter C? Kung ang question is about tobacco monopoly, sino naman yung inyong magiging choice? Okay, what will be your answer? Sir or Ma'am Ferrero Charlene, maraming salamat po for sending us stars. Ma'am Cherry Rose Gulbe, maraming salamat po. Ma'am Riz Soriano, thank you. Okay, sabi ni Sir Jong Jong or Ma'am Jong Jong, Basco. Sir Edmund Labio says Basco. Ma'am Evelyn... Evangeline Song says Basco. Okay, so Jose Basco naman. Kapag ka letter C, no? Jose Basco yung ating magiging choice. Now, ano naman yung term na ginagamit natin for letter D? Ano yung term na ginagamit natin for the resettlement of Filipino communities in Cabiceras? Okay, what is the term that we use? Ma'am Jenny Mias, maraming salamat po for the stars. Ano naman yung term? for the resettlement of Filipino communities in Cabiceras. Okay, sabi ni Ma'am Yvette Jane, Reduccion. Ma'am Joanna Sible, Reduccion. Sir RV Flores, Reduccion. Okay, so tumpak po yan, Reduction or Reduccion. 
okay, resettlement of Filipino communities in Cabeceras, no? So, um, kaya kung inyo napapansin, yung ating town center, kung nandyan yung, yung church, nandyan din yung central school, nandyan, 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 nandyan din, nabubulot, nandyan din yung inyong uh, public market, nandyan din yung inyong munisipyo, ang plaza, andyan din yung covered gym, andyan. Okay? So, that's what you call reduction. No? So, ginawa ng mga town centers ng Cabiseras. But of course, yung pinaka main objective ng mga Spanish during that time was that uh, it's it's going to be very easy for them to rule the the Filipinos. No? Kung nandyan yung Pilipino, yung lahat ng mga mamamayan ay nasa Cabisera, it's very easy for them to rule the people. Okay? Kesa yung malalayo, no? yung iba ay nasa, nasa bukid pa yung mga bahay, um, mas mahirap, no? mas mahirap silang abutin ng rules ng Spain during that time. Okay, so for number four, again, that's letter A. We go to number five, an example of stored chemical energy inside the human body, which is transformed into energy for the cell is... Letter A, water. Letter B, food. Letter C, air. Or letter D, blood. Okay, what is our choice? Number five. Number five po, ano ang ating tumpak na choice? Okay, batiin ko lang si Sir Jericho Swan de Talo. Okay, sabi ni Sir Jericho, laking tulong po sa akin na mga live videos, lalo na't ganitong oras na ako bakante kasi work sa umaga. Okay, so hello po, kawai-kawai sa lahat ng mga may work, no? Katulad ni Sir Jericho, swan de talo sa lahat ng mga may work, nahirapan, pero of course, hindi sumusuko para sa pangarap at para sa pamilya. Go lang po ng go, no? Kayang-kaya niyo po yan. Push lang po ng push. Okay, so... Huwag pong panghinaan ng, lo ng loob, no? Continue lang po. Kung po pwede maging member ng Team Piaché, ay magpa-member sa Team Piaché. Kung hindi naman, eh, mag-watch po ng ating free videos. Marami naman po tayong free videos. Okay, I see a lot of letter B's food. An example of stored chemical energy inside the human body, no? So, inside the human body, that's one of your hints. And it is transformed into energy for the human cells. Of course, ang tumpak na choice would be letter B, food. Okay, so food is an example of chemical energy. You have the chemical bonds in your food. And eventually, of course, this is going to be broken down into the different nutrients that your cells are going to use. Okay, so letter B, food, ang ating tumpak na choice, not water, air, or blood. Okay, we go to number six. What is a molecule that allows plants to capture energy from sunlight? Letter A, chlorophyll. Letter B, carbohydrates. Letter C, oxygen. Or letter D, ATP. Okay, hello po sa mga may work, pero hindi napapagod para sa kanilang pangarap at para sa pamilya. No? So, um, we are very proud of what you are doing. And I know, I'm sure your families are also very proud of all your hard work and your perseverance and all your effort. And of course, matutumbasan yan. Lahat ng yan, lahat ng sakripisyo, lahat ng paghihirap ay mawawala kapag kahawak na natin ang ating disensya. Okay, so um, continue lang po. Don't stop believing that you can reach your dream, your goal of becoming a licensed teacher. Continue, do movie marathons, balikan lahat ng ating videos. And, uh, of course, um, samahan na din ang prayers, no? Okay, 6A. What is a molecule that allows plants to capture energy from sunlight? And, of course, the correct choice is letter A. That's chlorophyll, okay? Chlorophyll po yung ating hinahanap. Now, remember, photosynthesis is a process through which plants would make their own food. Okay, so yung nangyayari po, you have sunlight. And sunlight actually is captured by the leaves of your plants through the action of your chlorophyll. Siya yung green pigment na nagka-capture ng energy ng sun, okay? And of course, carbon dioxide enters the leaves through the stomata, no? so the tiny holes in the leaves. And this eventually 
would also be used in in coordination with water then of course you are going to produce carbohydrates that that's glucose nor sugar that's c6h12o6 and oxygen gas okay so and oxi oxygen gas then okay ma'am ana risa natividad okay so mm, Okay, hello po, Ma'am Ana Risa Natividad. Okay, so umaasa sa pagre-review dito sa Gurong Pinoy makakapasa. All right, so again, that's chlorophyll for number six. This right here is the complete chemical equation for photosynthesis. Baka po ma makita ninyo, no? baka po lumabas sa inyong actual let, lumalabas ito if you are a bio major or if you are a general science major for our new curriculum, the general science na po yung inyong magiging major. So you have six molecules of carbon dioxide plus six molecules of water giving you one molecule of glucose plus six molecules of oxygen gas. Okay, maraming salamat. Ma'am, ako si Bona for sending us a super sticker. Okay, now carbohydrates, of course, hindi po siya yung ating hinahanap, although it's one of your biomolecules. So isa po siya sa ating mga biomolecules um, along with your fats, your proteins, and your nucleic acids. Marami na din tayong discussions on carbohydrates and your biomolecules. Oxygen, of course, it is one of the products of your photosynthesis and siya po yung inyong waste product for photosynthesis or byproduct. Okay, so byproduct or waste product lamang yung oxygen because of course this is not used mainly by your plants. This is given off to the atmosphere at siya yung ginagamit nating mga animals to breathe in and also to make our ATPs, no? to make energy in the cell in the process which we call cellular respiration. And ATP, ito na yung energy currency of the cell. Lumalabasin ito sa let. What is the energy currency of the cell? Your answer, answer would be ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Okay? And of course, the process of making ATP, which is the energy in the cell, is what you call cellular respiration. And it happens in the mitochondria. Kaya yung mitochondria mo ay tinatawag nating powerhouse of the cell. Okay? But again, for number six, letter A, a, ang compact na choice. We go to number 7. Maghapon at magdamag na nagbasa ng aklat at latahalain si Ginang Liana. Ang panaguri sa pangungusap ay letter A, nagbasa. Letter B, Ginang Liana. Letter C, maghapon. Or letter D, magdamag. Okay, what is our choice for number 7? Mm -hmm. Okay, what is our choice? Number seven, I see A's. Si Ma'am Mari Dinang, batiin ko lamang po. Isa din akong nanay ng tatlong makukulit na bata, Ma'am Mek. Very helpful ang pagre-review sa Guru Pinoy kasi pwedeng panuorin ulit pag di nakasalid ng live. Eh, tama po yan. No, mabuhay yung ating mga nanay. Lahat ng mga may trabaho, lahat ng mga, mga side gigs, no? yung mga, nag, mga naglalagari, mabuhay po. And of course, patuloy tayong mangarap para sa ating mga pamilya. Okay, number seven, what is our choice? Maghapon at magdamag na nagbasa ng aklat at lathalain si Ginang Liana. Ang panaguri sa pangungusap ay I see Ace nagbasa. Okay, the correct choice here of course would be letter A, nagbasa ay tumpak for question number 7. Okay, now when you say panaguri, ang hinahanap kasi natin ay panaguri. No? So when you say panag panaguri here, ito ay bahagi ng pangungusap na nagsasabi tungkol sa simuno o paksa. Yung simuno o paksa mo, this is the subject. No? So, kumbaga sa English, panagure is your predicate. Okay? So, predicate siya. Uh, ito ay nagsasabi tungkol sa yung simuno o paksa. Kadalasan ito ay kilos o isang pandiwa. Usually, this is a verb. No? Pandiwa siya or verb. And so, dito, nagbasa po yung ating pandiwa. No? So, si Ginang Liana, who is your simuno, yung paksa mo, yung subject mo sa inyong pangungusap ay si Ginang Liana, ay nagbasa ng aklat at lathalain, maghapon at magdamag. Okay, so letter A for number 7. We move on with question number 8. 
Apolinario Mabine, the acknowledged brains of the revolution, wrote the principles of conduct and morality that should govern the revolutionary government called letter A, Filipino Dentro LCM Ales, letter B, Himno Al Trabajo, letter C, La Cartilla, or letter D, El Verdadero de Calgo. I have mentioned this last uh, Wednesday, no, nung tayo ay final coaching for. Hoy, meron tayong kasamang call center agent. Ayan si Sir Jan Mergapol. Watching Gurung Pinoy Live. Well, nakahold ang call sa customer. Okay, so lagari talaga yan. Yung tunay na lagari, no? tunay na multitasking. Kaway-kaway daw sa lahat ng mga unit earners, sabi ni Ma'am Jane Manalo. Okay, I see this for number eight. And as I've mentioned, na mention ko na to no nung uh, tayo ay nag-review last Wednesday. Sinabi ko na to, na mention ko na. And so if you were a member of team, uh, you are a member of Team Pisce and you were listening, alam mo na kung ano ang inyong choice dito. Okay, Apolinario Mabini, the acknowledged brains of the revolution, wrote the principles of conduct and morality that should govern the revolutionary government called letter Di El Verdadero de Calugo, ang ating tumpak na choice, ang tunay na sampung utos ng Diyos. No? Ito yung sinulat ni Apolinario Mabini. Now, what about the rest of your choices here? Uh, your Filipino Dentro El Cien Eos is a socio-political essay written in four parts in the magazine La Solidaridad by Jose Rizal. Okay, so Jose Rizal naman itong Filipino Dentro El Cien Eos. Your letter B, Himno al Trabajo, is a poem also by Dr. Jose Rizal. And the hymn was praising Lipenios, yung mga tagalipa, who were working hard for the country. That's for Himno al Trabajo. And letter C, La Cartilla, or La Cartilla, uh, was written by Emilio Jacinto. No? This was also called Cartilla ng Katipunan as a guidebook for new members of the Katipunan. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Rowena Logon, for sending us a super sticker sa, sa ating YouTube channel. But then again, we were looking for letter D, El Verdadero de Calugo for number 8. We go to number 9. Ang lahat ng ito ay mahalagang katangian ng isang mananalumpate maliban sa letter A, matikas na tindig at pananalita. Letter B, malinaw na pagbigkas. Letter C, panggulat at pagbigkas. Or letter D, maayos na pagtalakay ng paksa. Okay, what is our choice for number nine? Number nine po, ano ang ating tumpak na choice? Okay, question number nine. Hmm. Ma'am Jen Jen, sabi ni Ma'am Jen Jen Jeline. Ma'am Mek, dami ko na po nalaklak na memo plus gold, pero konti pa lang yung mga retention sa utak ko. Baka hindi pa po gumaganan, baka kulang pa yung memo plus gold ni Ma'am. Ma'am Sheila Landicho de la Luna, maraming salamat po for sending us stars. Okay, what's your choice for number nine? Number nine na po tayo. Ano po yung ating choice, mga kaguro? Okay, ang lahat ng ito ay mahalagang katingian ng isang mananalumpate maliban sa. Okay, you have the term maliban sa. Maliban, this means exact, no? Except for which one? Marami salamat muna kay Ma'am Jennifer Bajo for sending us super stickers sa ating YouTube channel. Thank you po. Okay, matikas na tindig at pananalita, malinaw na pagbigkas, letter C, panggulat at pagbigkas, or letter D, maayos na pagtalakay ng paksa. And ang tumpak na choice of course here is letter C, no? panggulat. Ito yung uh, nagpamali sa inyong choice C. No? So this part right here, made choice C, Wrong. Okay, so panggulat at pagbigkas would be the correct choice for number nine. Okay, letter C po for number nine. We go to number ten. 
Scent of Apples, a collection of stories that succeeded with the United States audience was written by letter A, Bienvenido Santos, letter B, Jose Garcia Villa, letter C, F. Sionel Jose, or letter D, Carlos Bulosan, who is our choice for question number 10. Thank you, Mom Pearl Buena Fe Galunan for sending us stars. Marami salamat po for being our star sender for the three consecutive weeks. Okay, thank you for supporting Gurung Pinoy, Mom Pearl. Okay, what's your choice? Number 10. 10 ICAs. Letter A for number 10. Okay, number 10. Scent of Apples, a collection of stories that succeeded with the United States audience, was written by, the correct choice, of course, is letter A. That's Bienvenido Santos. Okay, let's take a look at your explanation of Santos. Uh, Scent of Apples tells the story of one man and his family's unique experience as Filipino immigrants to the United States. Okay, uh, Si Bienvenido Santos, of course, was well known as one of the best immigrant writers of Filipino-American writers. Uh, it's a unique story. The Scent of Apples was a unique story because Santos himself is a character in it. Okay. Letter B, uh, Jose Garcia Sevilla, he wrote Footnote to Youth, The Tales of the Philippines, and became the first book of fiction by a Filipino author published by a major United States-based uh, press. His pen name was Doveglion, okay? Da, da Veg Eagle and Lion, okay? So Dove, Eagle, Lion was uh, a combination of Dove, Eagle, and Lion, okay? That was the pen name of uh, Jose Garcia Villa. F. Sean and Jose Naman, his works have won the Carlos Palanca Memorial Awards for Literature. His short stories, The Gold Stealer in 1959, Waiwaya in 1979, Arbol de Fuego in 1980, his novel Mass in 1981, and his essay, A Scenario for Philippine Resistance in 1979. He also wrote the Rosales Saga novels because he was from Rosales, Pangasinan. Okay, So that was F. Sean Elose. Well, Carlos Bulosan was an English language Filipino novelist and poet who wrote My Father Goes to Court. If you can remember sa ating high school, no, pinabasa tayo ng My Father Goes to Court, which of course was um, a work of Carlos Bulosan. But we are looking for number 10, Bienvenido Santos po. Okay, we go to number 11. Siya ay matinong tao pero buwaya sa katihan. Anong kahulugan ng idiomatikong ito? Letter A, mayabang. Letter B, traidor. Letter C, duwag. Or letter D, mapagkunwari. Mm -hmm. What is our choice for number 11? Number 11 na po tayo. Again, if you can, magpamember po kayo sa Team Peche para mapanood nyo po yung ating full-length videos. And of course, mabalikan nyo po lahat ng ating final coaching videos and lahat ng ating files. Okay? Become a member in Team Peche. Kung sa March naman po kayo magtitake ng inyong let, magpamember po kayo sa Team Bruner. Mag-send lamang po na message sa ating Facebook page. Okay, number 11, ICBs. Letter B for number 11. Tumpak kaya ang letter B. Okay, number 11 again. It's letter B for most of you. Okay. Siya ay matinong tao pero buaya sa katihan. Anong kahulugan ng idiomatikong ito? And the correct choice, of course, here would be letter B. Traidor po ang ibig sabihin ng ating idiomaticong expression na buwaya sa katihan. Okay, that means uh, someone who's just waiting, no? So, naghihintay lamang kung kailan kanya dadakmain, kung kailan niya kalalapain, kung kailan kanya kakainin, no? So, traidor. That's the meaning of number 11. All right, we go to number 12. Anong uri ng panlapi ang ginagamit sa salitang kagandahan, magkaibigan, at nagunahan? Letter A, unlapi. Letter B, kabilaan. Letter C, laguhan. Or letter D, gitlapi. <laughs> okay, what is our choice for number 12? 
Number 12 na po tayo. Ano po ang ating tumpak na choice? Number 12, ICBs. Ano daw, karibal, karibal ko daw si Coco Melon. Eh, pinapanood yata ng baby ni ma'am si Coco Melon. Okay, number 12, ICBs. Okay, unang-una, ano ba yung ating root word? No? Ano yung salitang ugat sa kagandahan? Ano po yung ating salitang ugat? Sa word na kagandahan, ano yung ating salitang ugat? Sabi ni Sir Jack Lon, dito ako naligwak. Ganon din si Ma'am Mayra Alzal Alzate. Okay, ganda. Tama yan, Ma'am Yan yan, no? Ma'am Stel Desho, ganda yung ating salitang ugat. And so, yung dinagdag nito ay yung uh, unlaping ka at ang hulaping han. Okay, so magkaibigan, um, your, your unlapi, no? hulapi din at yung inyong uh, hulapi, unlapi at hulapi, ganda ko, sabi ni ng isang kaguro. Nagunahan, of course, your salitang ugat dito ay una, you have your hula, uh, unlapi, unlaping nag at hulaping Han, okay? So that means you actually have um, root word, uh, you have your root word in the middle and you have your prefix in front no, yung inyong unlapi at meron kang hulapi, no? So may una at meron kang huli, no? Na mga panlapi. And so the correct choice here would be letter B, kabilaan po yung ating hinahanap, no? Kabilaan. Unlapi kapag ka nasa unahan lamang, laguhan kapag ka may unlapi, may gitlapi at may hulapi. At gitlapi naman kapag ka nasa gitna lamang yung inyong panlapi, okay? So for this, you have letter B, kabilaan, kabilaan po. Okay, we go to number 13. Piliin ang simuno sa sumusunod na pangungusap. Uh, sa kabila ng kahirapan, nagsikap siya na makatapos ng kolehiyo. Letter A, kolehiyo. Letter B, siya. Letter C, nagsikap. Letter D, kahirapan. Okay, what's your choice? Number 13. Thirteen ICBs. Simuno. Remember your simuno is your paksa, no? Kung sino or ano ang pinag-uusapan sa inyong uh, pangungusap, okay? So, if you have your sentence here sa kabila ng kah kahirapan, nagsikap siya na makatapos sa, uh, ng kolehiyo. Sino ba yung pinag-uusapan natin o ano ba ang pinag-uusapan natin? The correct choice here, of course, would be letter B, siya. Okay? So, pwede mong sabihin na siya ay nagsikap na makatapos ng kolehiyo sa kabila ng kahirapan. Okay? So, when you say simuno again or yung inyong paksa or in English, this is subject, ano o sino ang inyong pinag-uusapan. Okay? So, siya for letter uh, B, that's for number 13. We go to number 14. Ito ang taas at baba ng bawat pantig para mas mabisa ang pagsasalita. Letter A, tono. Letter B, antala. Letter C, segmental. Or letter D, the end. Okay. What's your choice for number 14? Taas at baba ng bawat pantig ng every syllable para mas mabisa ang pagsasalita. I see a lot of letter A's sa ating comment box. Okay, tono, antala, segmental, or letter D, the in. Okay, I see a lot of letter A's. And of course, letter A po ang ating tumpak na choice dito, no tono. Napuntahan muna natin yung segmental, no? Ito, yung letter C mo. Ang mga ponemang segmental ay ponemang patinig at katinig. Of course, in Filipino, when you say patinig, ito po yung inyong vowel, no? So, meron tayong limang vowel at meron tayong labing anim na katinig. Ang Filipino ay may dalamput isang uh, po nemang segmental. Lumalabas po ito sa let, no? Tandaan, may question po sa let na 
ilan ang punemang segmental sa Filipino? And so your answer B21. Okay, so 21 po. Now, yung punemang supra-segmental naman ay ang mga sumusunod. That's tono, that's the pitch. Haba, ito po yung haba, of course, the length. The in is the stress. And antala is juncture. Okay, so antala, juncture, no, yung... Um, dagli ang pagtigil. That's your antala. Segmental, again, this is patinig at katinig na tunog na ponema. And the in, that's the stress. Okay, that's the stress. But here, we are looking for taas at baba. So, we are talking about tono. Tono, letter A po, yung ating nahanap for number 14. We go to number 15, isang uri ng talumpate na kung saan ang paksa ay binigay kapag nasa harapan na ng taga uh, pakinig. Letter A, may kahandaan. Letter B, editorial. Letter C, impromptu. Or letter D, malikain. Okay, what is our choice? Wala tayong math item tonight, no? Swerte tayo tonight. Wala math item. Um, karamihan items natin, Filipino. And of course, we stop at uh, item number 20, no? Hanggang 20 lang tayo tonight. Because... Um, Binigyan natin ng leeway, no? mas marami kayong chance na mag-self-review. Balikan lahat ng ating videos. Um, hinati natin yung Prof. Ed at yung Gen. Ed natin. So next Monday, ay Prof. Ed ulit tayo. Balik tayo ng Prof. Ed 20 items again. Okay, Mahi mahirap talaga yung Filipino. Okay, maraming mahina sa Filipino. Hindi po kayo nag-iisa. Yan, tama po yan, Sir C.B. John Paul III. Okay, nosebleed sa Filipino. Okay, eto napakadali. No? Sabi eh, ang paksa ay binigay kapag, or ang paksa ay binibigay kapag nasa harapan na ng uh, tagapakinig. And of course, the correct choice here would be letter C, impromptu. No? Yung may kandaan, binibigay na uh, prior to you going to the stage. No? Usually, kapag ka, merong ibang search, no? mga search na barangay, minsan may Miss Gay na binibigay na yung question no? bago pa sumalang sa stage yung mga kandidata. Yung sa Miss Q&A naman, sa Showtime, for example, ito ay isang impromptu. No? So, doon na lamang nila nalalaman kung ano yung kanilang question. Editorial, of course, this is a part of your newspaper. No? So, um, pagsulat siya sa newspaper, usually about your opinion. Malikain, ibang klase naman ang pagsusulat ito, usually sa mga short stories natin, malikain pagsusulat yung ating ginagamit. But we are looking for letter C, impromptu. We go to number 16, isang pamamaraan ng pagkuha ng impormasyon na gumagamit ng sunod-sunod na tatlong tuldo na nagpapakita na may bahagi na hindi na sinipi. Letter A, synthesis. Letter B, ellipsis. Letter C, abstract. Or letter D, synopsis. So what is our choice for number 16? Okay, 16, what is our choice? All right, I see a lot of letter B is in question. Now, this is a very common question in the let. Ilang beses na itong lumalabas sa let, no? Itong question na ito, sunod-sunod na tatlong tuldok na nagpapakita na may bahagi na hindi na sinipi. That means merong parte na hindi na isinulat, no? So, uh, um, may tatlong tuldok na lamang, dot, dot, dot na lamang yung inyong ginamit. And ang tumpak na choice natin dito ay letter B, that's ellipsis, no? You call this ellipsis. Okay, so here you have the three dots, for your ellipses, and these are the different uses and replacement for omitted words. What good fortune, that, 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 that the people do not think. A pause for effect, no? This is also used for a pause. Let uh, number three, Mona, use an unfinished thought. Or number four, a trail off into silence. So, so usually, merong parte na hindi na ini-include and you would use your ellipsis, yung three dots. If you have watched, I'm not sure if you have watched the movie uh, Mamma Mia, yung part one, no? So um, si, si Amanda, or si Amanda, I forgot the last name, si Amanda na isang actress, of course, um, she was playing the role of Meryl Streep's daughter and uh, she read the diary. 
Tapos sa diary na no, hindi tinatapos nung nung nanay yung kanyang sinusulat dot 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 no. So, minsan pagpupunta na sa sa nakakakilig na part, okay, sa exciting na part dot 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 yung sinusulat ng nanay no. So, she would read it as blah 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 and then dot dot dot. That's your ellipsis. That means merong mga parte na hindi na sinulat nung nanay, okay? And so the correct choice here is letter B. We go to ayon Amanda Seyfried. Tama ba Seyfried? Okay, number 17. Saan kabilang na uri ng tayutay ang pahayag na kapalaran? Huwag ka sanang mailap, no? Parang let. Applicable siya sa let, no? Let. Huwag ka sanang mailap. Letter A, pagtawag. Letter B, palit sa klaw. Letter C, pagmamalabes. Or letter D, palit tawag. What is our choice? Ay, kaway-kaway daw yung mga Filipino, Filipino major. Ang yayabang ng mga Filipino major ngayon. Okay, so sila yata yung mga naka-perfect ng quiz natin ngayon. All right, 17 ICAs. Kapalaran, huwag ka sanang mailap. Okay, ang tumpak na choice dito, of course, is letter A. Tama yung letter A na no? pagtawag or in English... Yes, sabi ni Ma'am Lori Lee Pulmano, this is called apostrophe, apostrophe. Sabi din ni Sir C.B. John Paul Arellano III, no? So, you are calling someone who is not around. Tinatawag mo yung isang tao or sometimes isang bagay na hindi mo nakikita. No? In this case, ang kapalaran, huwag ka sana mailap. Or when Juliet called out sa Teres, no? Romeo or Romeo, where art thou Romeo? Siya ay pagtawag. Again, in English, this is called apostrophe. Apostrophe po ang tawag natin dito sa English. Pagpapalit sa cloud, this is sinekdoke. Okay, so remember, sinekdoke mo, um, a part uh, represents the whole or vice versa. No? Ang pagpapalit tawag mo naman, this is metonymy. Metonymy, ginagamita mo ng related word, yung isang bagay. Pagmamalabis, of course, this is your exaggeration. Exaggeration or hyperbole. Again, mer meron po tayong video on the different idiomatic expressions. And uh, not idiomatic expression, sorry, figures of speech, examples, and meron silang Filipino translation. So panoorin niyo po yun, no? Bawat isa sa mga figures of speech natin ay tinalakay ko doon, kasama yung example, and of course, kasama din yung Filipino translation, okay? We move on with question number 18. Oh, Filipino pa rin, dit pa rin tayo tinapantanan ng Filipino. Ibigay ang angkop na damdaming napapaloob sa bakit gabi na ay di pa siya tumarating. Letter A, pagkatuwa. Letter B, pagkatakot. Letter C, pagkapuot. Or letter D, pagkagali. Ma'am Rhea Ann, isms po. Balikan niyo po yung ating video on isms of education. Okay, meron po tayong video na yon. All right, ICBs for number 18, letter B. And of course, letter B, ang tumpak na choice, okay? Bakit gabi na ay di pa siya dumarating? Of course, you are worried, no? Pagkatakot, you are worried, letter B, for number 18. Now, pagkapuot at pagkagalit or pagka, pagkagalit or pagkagalit, ay parehas lamang po yan, no? mas malaki lang ang degree ng pagkapuot. Pagkatuwa, of course, you are happy and hindi siya yung minahanap natin dito for number 18. Okay, we go to number 19. Systematikong paglalarawan ng mga datos na estatistika. Letter A, talahan na yan. Letter B, balangkas. Letter C, graph. Or letter D, mapa. What's your choice for 19? Okay, what is our choice? Question 19. <laughs> Sabi ni Sir Mark Rapada, ayan, dehado mga math major dito. Tama, no? Puro Filipino. Ay, wow. Si Ma'am Ay Arotubale. Ako po, Ma'am Ngite Abutenga. First time naka 100 sa quiz. Gumagana na Memo Plus. Dati... 45, 70, gang 88 quizzes ko, thanks sa video marathon. Okay, napaka-effective po ng video marathon. So again, mag-video marathon po, ubusin lahat ng videos natin dyan sa Team Piaché. And of course, ganun din po sa um, sa ating YouTube channel. no So mag-leave po kayo ng comment or i-like yung video para malaman nyo na tapos na, na napanood nyo na yung video na yan. Okay, I see a lot of letter C's graph. 
and of course, that's the correct choice. No? Systematicong paglalarawan. Ito yung pinakahint mo dito. No? It's an image and so graph yung ating hinahanap. No? Datos in, in statistics. Uh, now, the rest of your choices here, talahan na yan, this is just a table. Balangkas is an outline and map, of course, that's a map. Okay, but for statistics and the data sa inyong stat, yung ginagamit mo, of course, would be your graphs. Okay, different types of graphs. We move on with question number 20, last question tonight. Pangungusap na tumutukoy sa pangyayaring pangkalikasan o pangkapaligiran. Letter A, temporal. Letter B, phenomenal. Letter C, existential. Or letter D, modal. What is our choice for number 20? 20, what's your choice? ICB is tumpakaya ang letter B for number 20. Pangungusap na tumutukoy sa pangyayaring pangkalikas, pangkapalik pangkalikasan o pangkapaligiran. Nabubulol ako today. Okay? Pangkalikasan o pangkapaligiran. Nakaka, yung Filipino talaga hindi lang nakaka-nosebleed, nakakabulol pa, no? So, mabuhay mga Filipino major. Okay, I see a lot of letter Bs, Bs, phenomenal. And of course, ang tumpak na choice is letter B. Phenomenal po ang ating tumpak na choice dito. Now, what about the rest of your choices? Okay, the rest of your choices, temporal mo. This is from the term temporary, no? Temporaryo, nagsasaad ng mga kalagayan o panahong panandalian. Panandalian lamang, parang relasyon ninyo, no? Panandalian lang. Existential naman ay pagka mayroon. Kunwari, sinabi mong may tao sa... Sa silid, okay? May pagkain pa. That's an existential type of sentence. And modal naman, this is uh, nangangahulugan ng gusto na is pwede, maari, dapat o kailangan. Yung sa mga dapat, okay? That's your modal sentence. Modal naman siya. Alright? And so the correct choice again is letter B, phenomenal for question number 20. And of course, that ends tonight's discussion. We will be back on Monday. Okay, so Monday po po tayo babalik. Again, balikan po lahat ng ating full-length videos dyan po sa ating Team Piaché. If you are a member of our classified files, no, sa ating final coaching classified files na group, um, I suggest, I highly recommend, magpo-member din po kayo sa Team Piaché para po balikan nyo lahat ng ating full-length videos, especially yung mga final coaching videos natin since September 2021, January of this year, March, June, lahat po yun. Balikan like, lahat ng final coaching, unahin muna. And then, panoorin po lahat ng other videos sa ating Team Piaché. So again, if you are watching sa ating final coaching, classified files the group, mag-send po ng message sa ating Facebook page kung paano po kayo magpa-member talaga sa Team Piaché. And of course, if you are done with the rest of the videos, punta po sa ating YouTube channel, balikan po lahat ng ating videos. Okay, mag-movie marathon po. And then, of course, please do not forget to also enjoy your weekend because tonight is Friday and we are going back. We will be coming back on Monday. This has been Coach Mac of Guru Pinoy. Of course, I'll leave with the saying, uh, maliit man na buti ng mga kaalaman, ang dulo nito ay malaking kaginawaan. Maraming salamat. Happy weekend. Stay safe and good night, mga kaguro. Bye!